Is football about to change forever? According to a document released by Football Leaks, we could have a new European Super League within the next few years. But what does this mean for European football, for the teams involved, and more worryingly, for the teams not involved? Well, I'll be answering all those questions in the next few minutes as we look at the potential European Super League. So just what will the European Super League be? Well, according to documents leaked by Football Leaks, a website dedicated to football corruption and exposing all of it, it'll be a 16-team European Super League with 11 founders and five invited clubs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would clubs want to join? Well, it's a simple answer, really, and it's a theme throughout this video. It's the money. Having all of the money in your own pocket means all of the control. Whereas nowadays, when these big clubs have to deal with UEFA, by breaking off and creating their own sort of Super League, they won't have to deal with the regulations, the rules, and share a split of the money with UEFA. They won't dictate how much you get for reaching the Champions League final, for example. This means that this new Super League would negotiate all the TV rights, the deals, the marketing, the advertising, all that kind of stuff, for their own purposes and with their own goals in mind and at the end of it all they'll all get a fair split of the money well the 11 founders will get a split of the money the other five invited clubs may not get as much now we've spoken about five teams being invited and this is because they haven't figured out quite how a qualification system would work we all know nowadays where the top ranking teams in each division then go into the champions league but obviously it's not going to be the same for the super league in fact the 11 founding clubs will be immune from relegation for the first 20 years of the tournament this means 20 years of guaranteed income from all of the money that the super league can make but would teams really want to be willing to participate in this well if their star players say so then yes We've already heard the likes of Neymar at PSG talk about how the French league isn't really that exciting. And you can point to Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga, Juventus in Syria, and Barcelona in La Liga as to just how easy it is for some of these teams to win their domestic competition. This eventually becomes a little bit boring and players and fans want to see the biggest teams face off against each other every single week. Contrary to earlier opinion though, this won't be replacing the domestic leagues just yet. It'll be sort of a new Champions League. This is because most of the major clubs already make a shed load of money from their domestic league, especially the English ones. For example, the English TV rights deal sees the likes of Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester United all make their share of £2.24 billion. This means that every single club in the Premier League, even the ones that finish bottom, are guaranteed just under £95 million per season. So the big teams won't be leaving the Premier League just yet. As for what will happen in the future, well, we'll come on to that just shortly. But now, let's talk about how the money will affect them. Will they continue to dominate their domestic leagues? Well, in short, again, yes, of course they will. This means that the bigger clubs will just get bigger. They'll have more money for players, more money for wages, more money for infrastructure to build the club to attract even bigger and better players to the club. It's just a cycle that keeps on going. However, I do wonder what would happen if a massive team got relegated from the Premier League. What if they put all their efforts into the Super League, but then found themselves in the Championship, for example? I know it seems highly unlikely, but it would be a massive kick in the face to them. But I guess that's the whole point in the end, is that these big clubs won't rely on the money from their domestic league because they'll be earning enough from the Super League. Quick note, I wonder how many times I'm going to end up saying European Super League in this video because it feels like a lot already. But away from those money-hungry clubs who can afford the players, the wages, the infrastructure, and to bring all of the fans in, what does it mean for the rest of the league? To be honest, I can see very little changing at first for those just below the elite level, those not in the founding crew and those not invited, but more worryingly, I can see it changing massively for all of the teams below that, especially the lower ones in the Premier League. Let's take two examples, and when I say this, I do not mean any offence to Bournemouth, who I'm about to talk about, or do I mean any offence to Spurs fans. So let's start with Spurs. Because of the size of the club that they have already, the fans built up over years of tradition and history, the money they've got, the players they've got, the wages they can afford, the new stadium, the infrastructure, they'll still be able to compete domestically. Just look at this season, for example. They haven't bought anyone in the summer, but they're still having their best start to a Premier League season and find themselves right in the mix for a top four spot. When it comes to signing new players, well, of course, they'll all want to join the big money in the Super League. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be football with 11 players on the pitch, a few subs and a few in the match day squad. So not every single player can go to these top clubs. This is where they'll be moving down to the next level with the likes of Spurs, who can still challenge to be invited or maybe even qualify for the Super League sit. 
It is worth noting that if Spurs do qualify for the Champions League, this will be a Champions League without the biggest teams. This means the whole format, the way that the Champions League is viewed, may alter massively, but again, we'll come on to that very shortly. So we've looked at Spurs, who we think might just be alright for the next few years, but let's take a more serious look at teams below that. Let's take Bournemouth. Again, no offence to any of the fans, but Eddie Howe has done an absolute miracle with that club, taking them from just surviving relegation from League 2 and out of the Football League to the top half of the Premier League within 10 years. Now, Bournemouth, despite their success, aren't exactly a club with huge infrastructure. They don't have ridiculously rich owners, and they can't necessarily attract all the players they want on the wages they want to the South Coast. This could all hinder Bournemouth's progress going forward. Let's look at it this way. If the Super League becomes popular, then the Super League teams become more popular. This means that all the new fans that could potentially be converted to Bournemouth fans, be giving Bournemouth their money in tickets, shirts, sponsors, all that kind of stuff, will instead be giving it to the big players that they'll be seeing all over their screens all of the time. This will eventually mean that all the money that is given to the Premier League at the moment and shared equally, remember the 95 million you get for finishing bottom, will eventually go to the Super League, simultaneously ridding all of the Premier League of all of the money. This will devalue absolutely everything, not only in the Premier League, but in the Champions League as well. Can you imagine Bournemouth, let's say in a few years, are good enough to qualify for the Champions League, but once they get there, they find that no other teams are there, no other huge teams are in the pot, and the TV companies don't want to pay for the Champions League because the fans don't want to watch it, they want to watch the Super League instead. You can see the trend that's evolving and the effect that it's going to have on the rest of the game. This is where a big team like Spurs may just be able to survive because they've already got the backing behind them. But for lowly Bournemouth, who have a stadium capacity of just 11,000, that compares nothing to the millions and millions of people who will be turning into the Super League instead of going down to Bournemouth. And talking of the fans, it's now where I bring up the point where you guys can have your say. I want to know from you down in the comments section, what do you think of the Super League? And will you actually be going to regular football games if your team is not in that league? This is because I'm sure you've got the question, what about football being about playing football? What about the tradition, the history, playing for your club and all these other football utopian statements? Well, I'd like to believe in them as well, but unfortunately, I just can't see it happening. Bayern chairman Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, as well as Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp, have both dismissed the idea of playing in a European Super League, but as mentioned before, money definitely talks and it may even be out of their hands. For example, can you imagine lowly football clubs asking fans to spend money on coming to see them in a not-so-interesting game, asking to buy the player shirts of not-so-interesting players compared to all the Neymars, Ronaldos and Messis that will be playing in the big Super League? It's just not going to happen. After all, football has become a business and you don't need me to tell you that more money means good things for a business and for all of those involved. This isn't to say that the 2021 European Super League won't happen, but there's a pretty good chance it will when you consider the fact of how powerful these big clubs are and how corrupt the likes of FIFA really are. As we've said before, the tens of thousands of fans in the stadiums do not compare to the millions that will be watching the Super League on TV, so eventually all of the sponsors and all of the money will be looking elsewhere. As for the fans who do want to go and attend it, do you even have the money to go to a European away day every single week? Now, obviously, teams that are in the same country, it doesn't make a difference. But let's say you're going to be going into Europe. That's flights, hotels, food, drink, a match day ticket, and whatever else you want to be doing every other weekend just for an away game. It doesn't exactly seem viable. This means that eventually we'll be void of all these passionate atmosphere creating fans in the stadium, and we'll just have the armchair fans who have enough money to go and view these things as sort of a spectacle of entertainment rather than actually being passionate football fans. As for me, I'm one of these millions of football fans around the world who will be stuck at a crossroads if this European Super League does happen. When my team is playing, I want to go and watch them and I want to go and support them. However, do I want to give in to what the European Super League is effectively forcing us to watch? No. But on the other hand, I will be backing my team because let's be honest, I'm not just going to give up because they don't play in the league that I want them to anymore. At the end of the day, football fans can't pick and choose when they support their team. You're either in it or you're not. You're in it for the thick and the thin. And unfortunately, if it ends up that all of these football clubs around the world know just how to use that to their advantage, well then, so be it. It looks like we may have to look elsewhere, and who knows, this could bring the rise of the Football League, especially in England, to prominence. We could see the Championship, League 1 and League 2 take on new figures, more money and become more exciting, while all of the rich, money-hungry clubs go off and do their own thing. 
As said before, I want to know in the comment section everything that you guys think about this potential European Super League. Will you still go to the games? Will you pay your money to them? Or will you not really care and go and watch football elsewhere? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Smash the like button while you're there. And until next time, I will see you guys later.